Back in 1855, at the request of Napoleon III, the wines of Bordeaux were classified in advance of an exposition to be held in Paris. This was so the very best French wines could be highlighted at that exposition. The criteria for classification included the reputation of the producers, but was based primarily on transaction prices over an extended period of time. Given the fact that the 1855 classification of Bordeaux remains largely unchanged today and is still fairly accurate, it may surprise you to learn that it was created in less than two weeks. In all, there were 61 Bordeaux wine producers that were classified in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. 18 of them were classified as fifth gross. Many of the fifth growth Bordeaux producers have greatly increased the quality of their wines, especially recently, and would be rated much higher if there were a reclassification conducted today. Due to the large number of fifth growth Bordeaux producers, I'm going to discuss them in two parts, so I'll cover nine producers in each of the two videos. And these are intended to be standalone videos, so it doesn't matter which order you watch them in. Located in Poyac, fifth growth Bordeaux producer Claire Milon was acquired by the owners of Mouton Rothschild back in 1970. At that time, the vineyards were in total disarray, as they had hundreds of plots scattered all over the Appalachian, but only about 10.5 hectares of vines in production. Since that time, the vineyards have been replanted, and there's now around 45 hectares or so of vines that are in production, and they're planted to 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 37% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Franc, and there's also small percentages of Petit Verdot and Carmenere. Interestingly, these Carmenere vines are some of the oldest in Bordeaux, and they were planted way back in 1947. The vines average an impressive 50 years of age, and they even have some Cabernet vines that date way back to 1903. Claire Milon also has a robot named Ted that helps with the harvest. In addition to the improvements in the vineyard, Claire Milon also constructed a new winemaking facility around the 2007 time period. They now use a gravity flow system and also optical sorting to help ensure that they use only the highest quality fruit in their wines. They produce around 16,000 cases per year. The wine matures for around 14 to 18 months in 30% new French oak. This is a wine that definitely does better with 8 to 10 years of additional bottle age on it, so you could probably start enjoying the 2015 vintage now with a vigorous decant and perhaps a meal. This is a wine that I like to consider purchasing in strong vintages, so certainly vintages like 2009 and 10, 2015 and 16, 2018 through 2020, and 2022, which is available in futures now, would all be worthy of consideration. This one sells for around $90 per bottle. The 2020 should be on store shelves now, and it's definitely a very highly acclaimed wine, so that's one that you may want to consider in the near term. The owners of Mouton Rothschild also acquired another Poyac fifth growth Bordeaux producer, namely its neighbor, Chateau Darmayac, back in 1933. Darmayac has around 70 hectares of vines that are planted to 53% Cabernet Sauvignon, 37% Merlot, 8% Cabernet Franc, 2% Petit Verdot. The vines average an impressive 50 years, but this is in large part due to the fact that 20% of their vines were planted way back in 1890 and are thus 130 years old. A lot of these very old vines are their Cabernet Franc vines, and as they die off, they're being gradually replaced with Cabernet Sauvignon. Darmayac matures for around 16 months in 30% new French oak. This is another one that benefits from some additional bottle aging before you enjoy it, but probably six to eight years at a minimum would work for Darmayac. The same strong vintages are worthy of consideration for Darmayac, so 2009 and 10, 2015 and 16, 2018 through 20, and 2022. The good news about Darmayac is that it sells for a much more friendly $50 per bottle, and so this one offers excellent value, and the 2020 was well received by critics as well, so that one is on store shelves now and definitely one to keep an eye out for. Next up, Chateau Pettisclo. Pettisclo is also based in Poyac and traces its roots back to 1810. At that time it was created with land that was purchased from Grand Puy. This was before Grand Puy was split into two separate estates, Grand Puy du Casse and Grand Puy La Coste, both of which are fifth growth Bordeaux producers that I discuss in part one of this video. Petisclo has around 49 hectares of vineyards, 
that are planted to around 59% Cabernet Sauvignon, 36% Merlot, 3% Petit Verdot, and 2% Cabernet Franc. They've been gradually increasing the Cabernet Sauvignon percentage at the expense of the Merlot. The vines average around 35 years or so, and their best plots are located close to Lafitte. They completely overhauled the winery not so long ago, and now they're using optical sorting equipment and a much more stringent selection. As such, the quality for this wine has been skyrocketing in recent years. Pettis Globe was certified organic in 2022. I would not hesitate to buy any vintages of Pettis Globe, beginning with about the 2015 vintage or so. The 2020 vintage is on store shelves now and is definitely a wine that received favorable scores from critics. Better still, this one sells for only around $40 per bottle, so this is an incredible value at that price point. Better still, this is one that you only need to wait about three to five years on before you can enjoy it, so it doesn't require quite as much bottle age as many of the other fifth growth Bordeaux wines. Located in Eau Medoc, not so far from fourth growth Bordeaux producer Vechevel, and very close to the southern portion of Saint Julien, Chateau du Commensac is one of the most obscure fifth growth Bordeaux producers. Commensac has around 65 hectares of vines that are planted to 60% Cabernet Sauvignon and 40% Merlot. In 2007, they began an ambitious replanting project. Specifically, Commensac has been replanting their vineyard five hectares at a time. As a result, the average age of the vines is quite young, especially for a classified growth Bordeaux producer. This means that the wines currently tend to lack a little bit of complexity. However, as these vines mature, the wine should definitely improve as well. In fact, the common sack wines have been improving recently, and you may want to consider the vintages from 2018 through 2020. My personal favorite is the 2020 vintage, and I found that one selling for a very reasonable $36 a bottle. That one received 92 point scores from two well-known critics. Commonsac began gradually converting to organic farming beginning in the 2016 vintage. If you buy this wine, be sure to give it some additional bottle age. Probably six to seven years post vintage should be sufficient. It definitely shows much better with a little bit more time in the bottle. Located in Saint Estef, Coast Laborie is located directly across the street from the more famous coast. Coast de Stornel, which is a second growth in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. Coast Laborie has 18 hectares of vineyards that are planted to 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 35% Merlot, and 5% Cabernet Franc. In March of 2023, Coast de Stornel actually acquired Coast Laborie. Coast Laborie certainly has enormous potential given its proximity to Coast de Stornel and the favorable terroir that it has. Nevertheless, this is a wine that has struggled and that I generally do not recommend with the exception of the 2018 through 2020 vintages, which you may want to consider and do some additional research on. One of the reasons that Coast Laborie has struggled is due to their substandard viticultural practices. For example, this is one of the very few classified growth Bordeaux that uses a substantial amount of machine harvesting to pick their grapes. In addition, they don't really restrict their yields through green harvesting like the vast majority of classified growth Bordeaux. As a result, the wines lack some of the intensity and concentration you might expect in a classified growth Bordeaux. In addition, to mature the wines, Coast Laborie uses American oak, which is certainly very unusual in Bordeaux. Specifically, Coast Laborie uses 40% new American oak to mature the wines. Of course, the vast majority of Bordeaux producers use French oak and not American oak. Hopefully this will all change under new ownership and the wines will improve in quality going forward. But for now, you may want to consider the 2020 vintage, which sells for around $38 a bottle, and the 2018 through 2020 vintages are all potentially worthy of consideration. But other than that, I would probably pass on this one until we see what's going to happen with the viticultural practices under new ownership. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level 4 diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Located in the Omedoc, 
Cantemeril is a historic estate that dates way back to the 12th century. By accident, this estate was left off the 1855 classification of Bordeaux, but the owner was not one to take this lightly. She's a very feisty woman, and she actually brought in decades worth of sales records to demonstrate that the average sales price for Cantemeril was higher than that of some of the producers that were included in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. So ultimately, they corrected this mistake. And to this day, this is one of only two changes that's been made to the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. Unfortunately, however, Cantemero was later devastated by both phylloxera and a downy mildew outbreak towards the end of the 1800s. This producer flew largely under the radar until 1981. At that time, new ownership began to make improvements in the vineyard and also to make enhancements and to renovate the winemaking facilities. In 1999, Cantemeril acquired an additional 20 hectares of vines that were added to their holdings. In all, Cantemeril now has around 92 hectares of vines that are planted to 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Merlot, 6% Cabernet Franc, and 4% Petit Verdot. This wine is an absolutely exceptional value. I found it selling for around $28 a bottle. My favorite vintages are 2015, 2016, 2019, and 2020. This is one you can enjoy on the younger side, typically with three to five years of additional bottle age on it. The 2020 should be on store shelves now and was very well received by critics, so definitely keep an eye out for that one. Located in Poyac, Lynch Moussas and Lynch Baj were part of the same estate that was owned by a count from Ireland back in the 18th century. But that estate was so large, it was ultimately split up, with half of the property becoming Lynch Baj and the rest of it becoming Lynch Moussas. Sadly, however, Lynch Moussas became very run down and neglected, and by 1970, it was really quite unimpressive. But at that time, they began a renovation process in the winery, and they also reinvigorated the vineyards, which led to some progress. While the Lynch Moussas estate is very large, only around 60 hectares are planted to vines. Specifically, it's planted to 70% Cabernet Sauvignon and 30% Merlot. These vines average around 25 years of age or so. Lynch Moussas wine is aged for around 18 months in 60% new French oak. It improved quite dramatically beginning with the 2010 vintage and is definitely worth considering in stronger vintages. My personal favorite vintage is the 2019 vintage and I found that one selling for around $46 a bottle or so. If Lynch Baj is not my favorite fifth growth Bordeaux producer, it's certainly a sentimental favorite. Lynch Baj is the very first winery that I visited in Bordeaux, and it's a memory that I still cherish to this day. In addition, I've had many outstanding tasting experiences of Lynch Baj over the years, and the quality has been consistently outstanding. The Cos family has owned and operated Lynch Baj for many years, in 1973, Jean-Michel Caz returned from Paris where he had been working as an engineer and he began working for Lynch Baj. At that time, he set out to improve absolutely everything on the estate, from the warehouses to the winemaking facilities to the vineyards. In addition, significantly, Jean-Michel Caz began traveling a great deal to promote not only the Lynch Baj wines, but Bordeaux wine generally. He even visited China as early as 1986 to market the wines, which is certainly one of the very first trips that a Bordeaux producer made to China for that purpose. Lynch Bosch completed another modernization project in the winery in 2021. That was significant because it allows for plot-by-plot -plot vinification, which is a best practice in Bordeaux because, among other things, it allows for more precision in the winemaking process. Lynch Baj is located in the Poyak Appalachian, and it has 100 hectares planted to vine. Specifically, the vineyards are planted to 75% Cabernet Sauvignon, 17% Merlot, 6% Cabernet Franc, and 2% Petit Verdot. While these vines average 30 years of age, they have some impressive older vines that are around 90 years of age. Lynch Baj also makes a white wine that's a blend of Sauvignon Blanc, Semillon, and Muscadet. You should not have any difficulty tracking down Lynch Baj as they produce a lot of it. 35,000 cases per year in strong vintages. And my preference is definitely to buy Lynch Baj in stronger vintages. 
I also prefer Lynch Bosch with substantial age on it, usually at least 15 years or more. As mentioned, I've had some outstanding tasting experiences with Lynch Bosch, and it's a tremendously age-worthy wine, particularly in strong vintages. For example, last summer, we did a side-by-side -side tasting of Lynch Bosch where we had the 1961, 1982, and 1989 and 1990. At that time, I had a preference for the 1990 Lynch Bosch, although the 1961 was certainly still holding up very well, and the other two wines were extremely impressive too. More recently, however, a few months ago, I tasted both the 1982 Lynch Bosch and the 1990 Lynch Bosch as part of eight different wines that were in a blind tasting, and in that tasting, the 1982 was my favorite, although the 1990 was still very strong indeed. So I would definitely keep an eye out for vintages like 1989 and 1990, as they're still showing extremely well today. More recent vintages of Lynch Bosch that I enjoy include 2009 and 10, 2015 and 16, and 2018 through 2020. The 2019 vintage is particularly noteworthy, however, as some people think that this may be the best Lynch Bosch that has ever been produced. So this one is certainly worth stocking up on if you don't have it in your cellar already. It will cost you a little bit more, as I've seen it selling for around $160 to $190, but it's definitely a collectible Lynch Bosch, and if you're a big Lynch Bosch fan, it's definitely something you need to purchase. Despite the challenges of the 2021 vintage, the Lynch Bosch from that vintage seems to be well received by critics, and the 2022 vintage is another one that figures to be one of the better vintages of Lynch Bosch ever produced. So definitely keep an eye out for those down the road. Located in the Margot Appellation, Chateau du Tetre is a historic producer that dates way back to 1143. Unfortunately, not long after the 1855 classification of Bordeaux, this estate fell into disrepair and its wines were uninspiring for many years. Ultimately, however, Chateau Giscourt's owners also acquired this property and began making improvements to the viticultural practices. Among other things, they immediately halted the machine harvesting, and they also replanted a number of the vines. Today, this producer has 54 hectares of vineyards, and its vineyard is the exact same size that it was in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux, and unlike many producers, it's located in one contiguous block. The vineyards today are planted to 43% Cabernet Sauvignon, 33% Merlot, 19% Cabernet Franc, and 5% Petit Verdot. They've been gradually increasing the Merlot percentage and reducing the Cabernet Sauvignon percentage. This vineyard is planted at one of the highest elevations in the Margot Appellation, and so it tends to be the coolest site in the Margot Appellation. About 50% of the vineyard is farmed biodynamically. Duterte's wines mature in 50% new French oak for around 18 months before they're bottled. This has been a consistent producer since around 2000 or so, and its wines consistently score between 90 and 92 points with most critics. This is a wine that you can purchase for around 40 bucks a bottle. If you've not yet seen part one of this video, please be sure to watch that as it includes a number of outstanding producers, including Ponte Canet.